Hi and welcome to the Felt Hub with Lincolnshire Fen Crafts. Um, great to have you here again. This is part three of how to needle felt this Cornish seascape. Um, the last couple of parts we really focused on the sky and getting these houses blocked in with this gorgeous border that really sort of makes everything pop. And then today we're going to work on this bottom section here so I'm going to show you how easy it is to to fill in these gaps complete the boat and do these three dimensional seagulls which um, really just are the icing on the cake of the picture so um, go back to parts one and two if you haven't watched them start from there and then come back to part three and don't forget to um, subscribe below so that you get instant notifications for any new tutorials and make sure you hit the bell as well and that will make sure that you um, will see any new tutorials as they start. So let's get going. So starting off um, from where we finished in part two which was the sky was completed, the houses were completed and we're working our way down. So the section I'm now going to work on is the wall. And now um, if you have the kit, you'll have all the walls and the printed picture so that you've transferred all of that. If not, just work from whatever brightly coloured walls you have. It doesn't matter what you've got or what you use. So we're going to create this this harbour wall and there's a, and, and there's a few little things sort of that we can do to make it look like a wall rather than just lay down um, the flat wall so I've got here some carded wool again you can use wool top doesn't matter and I'm just going to split that down the centre because there's quite a lot there and in part one if you remember we did the sky and we laid that flat flat felted it made sure it was nicely attached to the linen fabric we're working on or calico as you may call it and what I'm going to do is exactly the same so I'm just going to work in small sections I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it will take way too long and I'm sure we've um, all got things we want to do i.e felting cracking on with the picture so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay just sections down now don't worry about covering up this boat uh, rigging here and fill that in later and don't worry about the ladders either and just lay that down and you just really want a nice thin layer and make sure that that overlaps and goes over the edge of the fabric now, as I went through in part one, how um, what needles you should be using, what wool you can use, the techniques we'll be using. I'm just, again, going straight back to the 38 star needle, my favourite all rounder. And just going to work with a single needle to start with, just to get this nice and flat. And as you can see, just working our way along there. And then using these lines that we've created when we traced our picture onto the fabric as our guide. And you can use that needle as well to, to draw move that over a little bit, to draw and tease that wool over. Now I'm just going to speed this up. So I've got a punch tool here. Now, because I'm working on foam, instead of seven needles, I've just got five in there because if you've got seven and you work on foam, it tends to bounce. If you're working on a rice mat, something like that, or a, or a, a soft wool mat, you can get away with all seven, but I've reduced it to five. And then what I'm doing, just using this needle just to really quickly get those fibers down so that they are nice and flat but again as i said you don't need to use that you can just use a single needle but we do want this nice and securely attached
and it sits directly under these houses again you're going to block this this out with these lovely dark lines later on so don't be too precious about where that wool is sitting and you see how I'm just dragging the wool with my needle okay so I would normally work that a little bit more but for the purposes of video I think I'm quite happy with that and see how quick that was so you've got that um, harbour wall laid down remember because it's a wall there's going to be you know different dimensions and shadows to it so we don't want it too flat some nice little sort of undulations lumps and bumps are absolutely fine <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do if you've got the kit instructions you'll probably do all of the um, bordering right at the end but it really doesn't matter so I am just going to this is um, now this is Jacob wool top that I'm using here and the, you can see that when I pull that tightly it doesn't separate if I did that with a carded wool just pulls apart because these are much longer lengths of wool so I am just going to twizzle that in my fingers and I'm going to lay that down there hold with that hand till that's nice and firmly secured and then just pop along the entire top of that wall there and then just pull away or snip any loose parts and then any bits you've got don't waste them continue along just get that first part nice and firmly in we can snip any loose bits a bit later and then just hold so you've got that nice straightish line all the way along and you see how straight away that brings that area of that picture to life and then again a very thin strip and work along the base of the wall here And use that needle again just to draw that wool along just tidy that up a little bit and again and it doesn't have to be even the lines don't have to be even all the way along it's good to have some areas that are thinner and thicker than others And there we go, you've brought that, you've brought that to life. Again, you've made that pop as you did with all the houses that we did in parts one and two. Now, to bring it to life, all I've done is I've added some little accents of the dark wool. And it makes such a difference. When you look at it, you immediately recognise it as... A wall rather than just a block of color it could be wood at the moment it could be flat so it could be anything so what we want to do is create the illusion of brickwork so all we do is just a little bit there twizzle it if it's a bit thick and you don't want these edges um sort of you know sharp 90 degree angles you want them quite soft so it's going to do that there snip off any ends and just flatten down the areas around it 
and then I'm just going to add just one line here snip it off and then another here and see what I'm doing there I'm just twizzling that wool just to mat it my needle and please be careful of your fingers when you're doing this so you just hold with one end and then use the needle to poke in the other and make sure it doesn't get lost in the wool of the wall that you've already put down snip that off and then all you do is work your way along and don't over over fill it as you can see these are just a few little areas that I've popped in here It'll work here working the opposite way make sure that corner there is nicely tucked in so that you don't pull it out take the loose end and snip and that is it that is how easy it is to create that wall and then under this house here we have the ladders and we don't want them particularly straight well you know that remember they're going to be pretty ancient so we don't want super straight lines so I'm just going to pop that there so we'll do the struts at the side or the bars at the side and then I'm just going to bring that over slightly and I'm going to twist it just to you know so that it, it's a little bit more dense we don't get any wispy areas And bring that down to the base of the wall you can even bring it round a bit so it doesn't look straight snip that off snip this off here and then working the same way twist that wool just to mat it a little bit hold with your fingers poke that in so make sure you've got some loose wool here because it will be drawn into the fabric and then I'm just kind of putting it in different areas so it doesn't you remember this is going to be really old wood so it doesn't want to be perfectly straight There we go, and then trim that. And trim that bit there. And then use that bit that we've trimmed. So we're going to create that rung here. I'm going to pop that in there. And across there, like so. Give it a snip. And it doesn't matter that we're cutting through the fibres by snipping because we're actually not using those snipped ends to felt into the wool so it will, it will attach itself quite nicely. Again, snip. And when you've finished the entire picture, you'll go over it and tidy up any areas that need it and again don't aim for perfection because that is not what this picture is all about lay another rung 
please be careful of your fingers like say if you're doing it this method use a finger guard if you feel that you need to or you're quite new to needle felting stabbing your fingers is unavoidable and I did used to use finger guards um, I think when I first started but now I don't bother I'm used to sort of poking my fingers and I just find them a bit cumbersome but lots of people love you know have no problems working with them at all so there you go and that wall is transformed just by the addition of a few lines and an ancient ladder taking you down to your boat so as you can see I've now just added a few more details representing the brickwork of the wall I've just blocked in the base of the wall a little bit more just to give that a stronger look and now what I'm going to do is just show you how to do the rigging the boat is done exactly the same as you did the houses you fill in whichever colors you want um, and again use that dark color to block so I've got this bright red at the bottom because I know that's going to contrast really well with this kind of aqua color that we've got going on in the sea I've got the brown that we used on the roofs of the houses I've got the same um, I think that's like a teal uh, color here a nice bright greeny teal color and a yellow so everything's contrasting so you're just working exactly the same way that you did with the houses filling in the colors first and then using the dark wool that you have for the outline but what I just wanted to do was just show you how easy it is to do um, to actually create this rigging uh, that's a bit thick so I'll just pull a little bit away and you really want to kind of use your hands to to mat this because it wants to stick together and then the point's going to finish about here so I'm just going to in fact that's still a little bit thick so I'm just going to thin that out leave a little bit loose because as I said before you're going to lose some of it into the fabric keep hold of this keep this nice and straight and what you can do is if you find that it's starting to look a little bit wispy you can twist it and just leave that in there and then we're going to just work up over into the wall We want nice straight lines for this, well, as straight as possible. So there you go. And then I'm going to bring that and fix that point with my needle. And I'm going to bring that down here. And again, just give that a little twist. just so that it doesn't become wispy. Make sure that point's nice and firm. And don't over felt, you're just tacking it in so it's secure. So that's looking good. Just going to trim those ends off. And then take another section here, which is going to go from the point. So work into that point, the end, leaving this little bit loose here for any that you're going to lose into the fabric. And just bring that straight down to where the side of the boat actually starts. And 
and then I'm just going to take this bit here and just make that a little bit wider at the bottom you don't have to but and then it's going to join this here and trim That bit. that bit is just coming off a little bit so I'm just going to pop that in a little bit more and again get that and don't trim too close to the wall because you'll trim the area that you've just felted in and that's your rigging done and then as I said you can fill this boat area in as you did with the houses exactly the same, just fill in the little sections, just using your needle. And make sure it's nice and flat. Again, this is flat felted, not two or three dimen not three dimensional, should I say. So it's two dimensional. So it wants to be flat and you want to be able to make sure you don't overlap those lines because you want to save space for those colours and then continue to work that bring it in make sure those edges are nice and straight keep going get it nice and flat And then I've used a nice sort of lemony colour for the this area here. I'm just going to pop that on and I've covered up the the life boys but we'll go back to those bring over those edges so you want that nice a nice block of color there nice and flat but nice and dense with that color so just continue with that. If you wanted to speed it up, you don't need it. But again, you could just go over with your punch tool if you're using one of those. And then I've got red at the bottom here. And then what I have here is the life um, is the life boys, uh, or the life rings. And all I've done is I've done a circle of um, black and then a little circle of red and then I've popped a little dot of black in the middle and a little line just leading up. So continue with your boat until that's nicely felted and finished. And then we will start to work on our fabulous seagulls. Okay, so I've just blocked in the colours of the boat and I'm just going to show you, created this cute little cabin here, got a little yellow roof, and then just to create the window, just a little pinch of white, don't bother trying to shape it before you put it on, use your needle to do that, and do the same with the life boys when you do this. Just create a rough circle, which you can see there, look at that, really good, and then, to give it that depth, I'm just taking a really small pinch of dark wool, just rolling it in my fingers. I don't want to kind of mess up that white and go straight through the center. Bring that dark into the center, push it right through. You'll lose half of that in the fabric, which is what you want. And there you go, you've got that illusion of the window. 
there and you do exactly the same with these life boys that you see here so i'm going to work on the seagulls now now this is the um really the only apart from some areas of the sea this is the only 3d element that you have on this picture and you start it exactly the same way as you did everything else that you've done so far by just popping your white wool and just using the lines of the seagull as a guide leaving that beak free and don't worry about flattening this out because this is going to be a 3d element so just work on getting that white laid down and then we can build up from there and work that down to the tail just take some thin strips here And the wing that you could see um, in the drawing itself has, has disappeared, but we'll we'll add that in later. But we're just going to work along that tail. And don't worry if you lose some of the lines. We, we it, it really doesn't matter see will fill in those gaps and this is one of the the one area that we're not going to border in a darker color see um we don't want that around the seagulls and then i mean you can leave these flat if that's how you prefer them but i think it's um really nice to have a a 3d element in this picture and they are kind of the stars of the show they're right at the forefront of the picture they so they obviously they look bigger as everything else is sort of getting smaller as it goes away so i think the three-dimensional look works particularly well for this area Again, can you just see you can use your fingers so you haven't lost that line so you can use your fingers just to pull that in for the shape it's not for the line because the line won't be visible when we're finished but it's just to make sure you've got that nice curve you want this nice curve of the back going along the tail use your needle just to pull that in And around the head and your fingers as well you can just use the shape you don't need to use your needle but can you see how I'm just using my fingers just to create that shape and then you add another layer and again you don't have to create a shape before you add it to the seagull you just pop it on and felt away using the needle To drag that along and then you just continue to build that up as much as you like as you can see here and then when you've done that we'll come back and we'll do the beak so now that you've got that body filled in as you can see we've got this nice 3d shape going on here you can build that up more if you wish i am just going to add the wing and all i've got is um this it's a nice really um it's this is a wool top so it's a really nice sort of seagully gray um you could go with something a little bit lighter i suppose and then i'm just going to just roll that in my fingers so I've got a little point at the end there. And I'm going to pop that on and then just attach with my needle. And this, this bit's going to be flat onto the, 
onto the seagull. I'm going to create a nice curve where that wing sits there. And I'll add a little bit more wool to that in a minute. And just going to twizzle that end a little bit because I'll probably bring that, fold that over. There we go, bring that back up there and then just drag that down. And then you can just work that a little bit more, stop the video, get it how you want it. If it's gone completely wrong, take it off, start again. And that's working pretty well, as you can see. And then for the beak here, I've gone for this nice zingy orange, the same orange that we used in the house here. And remember with a seagull, the beaks are long and pointy and they kind of curve over. So you really want to start small. You can add some more to it. Fold it over if you wish. But that is going to be the point. I'm just twizzling the point. I'm going to have some excess here, which is fine because I'll trim that off. And I'm just going to use my needle just to bring that over. Bring that in. And then it wants to go into the side of the head there. Kind of want to lose it into the side of the head here because the beak's going to be a bit fl a lot flatter. And just push that in. And then drag that out again. And then I'll just push that in there. And then what I'll do is I'll use this excess here to create the bottom beak. And it's a little bit fiddly this, but that's okay. I'm just going to pull a little bit away. I'm just going to twizzle that end a little bit. And make sure that you've got that gap between the top and the bottom beak. That's important. Otherwise it kind of just loses itself. Almost as if they've got their beaks open, ready for a tourist chip to drop into their mouths. There we go, now and just bring that over. And remember, this is an impression of a seagull. It's clearly a seagull, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But I always like to use, even when doing something like this, something really simple or slightly abstract, I do like to have a photograph just um, to show the details. And there we go. I'll probably work that a bit more, but that's okay. And then the same for the other seagull. And then this area here is the wing. So this actually does want to be a bit more three dimensional. So pop that on. Just make sure you use those lines as your guide. You can do the body first and then add the wing, it really doesn't matter. And you can trim off any wispy bits that you don't manage to get tucked in. I think I should be able to get most of these in there. And then really give that a good poke, flatten it down. Like I said, it wants to be slightly three dimensional but not more so than the body. You can also use your fingers as well just to smooth out 
the areas. And then continue filling the body as you did with this one. And then what you can do is take a tiny pinch of that gray that you used for the wing. Just roll it in your fingers. And we'll use this as the eye. So get it kind of like so. And just pop it on. It looks too big, which it is, but what will happen is we'll poke that through and it will get smaller as it disappears into the wool that's there and the fabric. And then you can tease some of the white around it if it still feels like it's too big. There we go. That's working well for me. And then make sure that you actually pull away this fabric as you're working as you can see that's what we've got on the back now so you can see everything's coming through nicely boat with a seagull here the houses the uh, sky and then we're just going to with a yellow rather than an orange we're just going to fill in these legs now don't worry the shape will be very very loose it's just an impression of the legs again twizzle that wool pop it at the base there you probably lose some of this when you add the C so you may need to go over it again just pull it down you don't want them you don't want the legs too thick remember they've got quite thin legs and maybe use a little bit too much wool here but I can sort that out bring that down and then we're just going to fan it out. So I know we've got little details in here and if you want to go back and add in some little dark lines for details, um, if you may be a bit more confident at needle felting, you know, if you've done needle felting previously, but if you're a beginner and you don't feel confident enough to do that, then don't. I'm just going to trim that, trim that off. And you can see there we've got this leg going on here. So there we go. So then go back, finish the other seagull as you have the first one. This one's got a closed beak, but again, if you want to open the beak, that's fine. Got a little line just down here, a little dark line or a darker area if you want to actually show the um, the gap, but I didn't bother. It's quite, as you can see, just left it as it is. Fill in the rest of the body, pop your eye on, do the rest of the legs, and then I shall show you how we do the trunks that they're standing on, and we'll add the C as the final part. As you can see now, I've completed both seagulls and I've just started working on these um, wooden posts that they're actually standing on in the sea. So I'm using just some, this is Jacob wool top, but again, carded wool, anything that you've got will work fine. And I'm just working around the lines at the moment and get this tucked right into the bodies of these seagulls because what you don't want to do is lose that definition so make sure that you are nice and tucked under that body and then work your way down work around the feet bring that wool around doesn't have to be too neat don't worry about it And at the moment it just looks like a block of colour. It's not really representing you know, like the driftwood or a wood type log that they're actually standing on. So I'm just popping this colour in. I'm just doing this very quickly for you. And this is the line of the other block coming down. And just drag that wool away 
from those legs and feet so you can still see them. Pop in a little bit more wool here. And mine's kind of stopped short here, but I'm just going to bring that down to the edge of the fabric because we don't want any gaps. And again, just strips of wool. Bring that over, tease that over the edge. All these edge parts, if you like a neat finish, will be tucked under later anyway. And again, if you wanted to, you could just use your punch tool just to flatten those areas down, but there really is no need. Just a single needle works fine. Bring that around the foot there. And then just, see this little section here? That's the wood sat behind the seagull. You're not just going to have a, an empty gap. So we'll pop that under as well. Don't lose those legs, but if you do, don't worry because you can just pop that color back on, which you'll probably have to do for quite a lot of this, this area anyway, you know, when you're working around the boat and the rigging lost that leg there so it looks like it's got a gap there we go there it is I'm just going to trim that bit off and then just flatten that so at the moment it doesn't it's not really representing anything so you know it's not clear what it is we assume what it is but I think we can make it look better than that. Let's pull that away and you see how important the topper is underneath because it really protects that mat. So what I've done on this picture is I've just put some lighter wool around just to give the impression of a piece of wood or driftwood. So I'm just going to take very thin strips of wool and I'm just going to lay it down like so quite loosely and then I'm going to create some depth and dimension by circling or edging the base that they're actually stood on like I have here just gives it more meaning creating a sort of circle of kinds trim that piece and we want that in the center there as well between the feet which is quite important again and this is the um, this is the same wall that I used for the uh, harbour wall actually but you can use anything that is a lighter or darker I suppose but this this adds light because I'm using a lighter and make sure there's definite separation between the lines that they're not merging just one more there so you can see now that that makes it clear when you look at it what it actually is it's 
not just a lump of something that they're stood on. And then work along and do the same for the other piece. So we're on the, the home straight now and we are just going to really work on the sea area now. And it's exactly the same as you did in uh, with the sky in part one. You're just laying thin wisps around this area that needs blocking in. Make sure you come right up to the, the edges. Just bring that out a little bit. There we go. Lay them around the seagulls because this is going to go right up to where the seagulls are. Just thin wisps. You don't want it too thick because we are going to add detail with more fibres. So this sea area is actually going to be quite flat. And then if you've got a punch tool, you can just really get to town with that pretty quickly. These are really good as well if, if uh, for kids because they've got this guard that retracts so it really protects their fingers. So flat felting using the punch tool is great if you want to get the kids involved. The younger kids anyway. Don't really recommend it for um, any younger than 12 but and even then with proper supervision but if you've got younger kids and they do want to have a little play and you're watching them like a hawk then this is what I would recommend they only need one hand to work with the other hand can be kept out of the way so I'm just tacking all that down and I'm not going to make this as flat as the sky Because obviously it's got a lot more you know a lot more movement but just when you're going around this seagull area make sure that you pull that wool take it off the seagull and push it under as you can see where the body of the seagull is because you don't want to lose any of that work that you've just done and just do the main areas and any little fiddly areas you can come back and block in later. And again, don't worry about gaps because you will have lots of different shades and contrast going on. So just continue to fill that in until the whole area is nice and secure. And then we will come back and do the final part, which is just adding these beautiful fibres. We've got these silks and these gorgeous wool blends just to add some nice contrast and three dimension. So as you can see now, I have blocked in this area. Bring it back out for you again. Blocked in this area of sea here, worked around into all the little sort of nooks and crannies around the seagulls. Once I've done the sea, I will then go around and block this boat in with the dark fibres. But what I really wanted to show you was how just to add some dimension to the sea, because this is where we want a little bit of movement, and or a lot, it just depends on what you want um, the final look to be. But um, here I've got some beautiful fibres. Now this is called Silk Throaster's Waist. Um, I'll put links to everything in the description, tools, um, the kit, there's a pattern download you can get and um, anything else that I might mention in the video. This is amazing stuff and what it does is it gives this sort of breaking waves feel or you could use it as fishermen's nets. It's um, I think I used it on the North Sea Coast picture that is also on my channel. So that's uh, another coastal picture but completely different. Um, so what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I've got some beautiful silk fibre here. Uh, in nice colours that work with this but just a little bit of contrast so it's darker and I've got this amazing um, it's a wool top 
blended with silk and little sort of wool neps and it's just gorgeous and again if you've got the kit you will have all of these fibers in there so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that down and what I want to do is create a kind of wave so I'm just going to keep that pushed up with my fingers and then just gently tack it down and it really gives this incredible impression of sort of rolling waves around that boat and then I've got this lovely silk here that I'm just going to pop in as well and I'm just going to drag that up there towards the, the wall and you just want to tack this on because what you don't want to do is to create lines you know you want it soft and billowy and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull a little bit of this fiber off and I'm going to just pop that into that wool there and can you see how beautiful that is it gives such a great effect really does you know you make just it, it looks like the waves are breaking and then just sort of tease it out so it's almost disappears and then you know you can add a little bit down here as well towards the base of the picture I'm definitely going to have some around the base of where the seagulls are here because you can imagine the waves kind of splashing up and you could do the same with the um, the wool that you have you know you could create little areas of three dimension you can blend that with silk for contrast and then I've got a little bit of teal there so you can just blend those together and it just breaks up that colour a little bit and it transforms the picture I mean the picture was beautiful anyway but it really does transform and use your fingers just to lift it and leave it and you see what a difference that makes and all these colours tie together so beautifully and then just continue with that I'm just going to blow off those bits the silk, fibre, the silk roaster's waste can be a bit bitty so you'll need to give your painting um, a bit of a shake probably afterwards if you've used it but there you go I mean I've barely tacked that on so now all you need to do is just go over the entire piece obviously I've got these houses to fill in and um, block the boats with this dark wool as a border to make that pop just check that you're happy with all these areas I've lost a little bit of leg there so I'll, I'll fill that in and complete it and then you've got all these loose edges and the reason you want it over the edge of the fiber is so that you want to keep that uh, sorry the linen you want to keep that linen intact you don't want it to fray so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to you can leave it as it is if you just want to hang it like that or display it like so but then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it over just pull those edges over just tack them on just so they hold And what you end up with is a nice, neat, tidy edge. As I said, you don't have to do this if you want to kind of leave it loose and a bit wild. But there you go. Can you see the difference that's made? All of a sudden it now becomes a painting and it's absolutely beautiful and then one last thing I wanted to show you which is if you just wanted to add a little bit of dimension to the houses just pull that off you can just do a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney just pop that on there a few dark strands so just remove those 
hold that. And then you've got this lovely three-dimensional wisp of wool that looks like smoke coming from the chimney. Although I have to say, it looks like such a beautiful day. Um, I can't imagine there are any fires on. And they certainly aren't here because we're working in 30 degree heat. So I hope you um, weren't too distracted by the fan that I've got on in the background. And then what I've done to hang this is I've just poked a couple of holes in the top. You can frame it. And then I've got this lovely piece of driftwood here. And again, that comes with a kit if you wanted to buy the kit. And then you can just hang it. And that's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's perfect. It's the perfect finish to your painting. So make sure you subscribe below, hit the bell for notifications. That's really important because if you don't do that, you won't see my video tutorials as they happen. And I hope you have had an amazing time making that. Um, you can send me photographs via the website, the Link into Fencraft's website. Um, there's a contact form on there or just contact me via email. Again, all my details will be below as well as the links for the kits and the patterns and the tools that I've used to complete this absolutely beautiful Cornwall by the sea painted with wool needle felted picture. So thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon.